Good morning, everybody. Today we are in my horse barn and we have a helper with us today. Um, this is Olivia. Say hi, Olivia. Hey. <laughs> um, Olivia actually worked with us about a year and a half ago for several months during the summertime and we actually made some videos with her in it. She was driving some horses and just dealing with horses and uh, We'll even show you, we'll put a tag on those, those videos so you can watch them if you'd like to. But, uh, but Olivia has, has helped me now during her Christmas break. She's in college. She is going to be a vet tech. So maybe explain a little bit about that. What, what's involved in that, Olivia? Uh, a vet tech basically is um, like your veterinarian's assistant. They can basically do everything of that can except for surgery, prognosis, diagnosis, and there's one other word that I can't think of at the moment. But um, at the, the amount of schooling for a vet, full vet, did not sound very appealing to me at the time. So I figured I'd go for the next closest thing, which is a vet tech. So your desire to help here with the horses is because because I like to, I, I want to learn more about handling horses and that is my long-term goal is to be with the horses. Okay. And okay. large large animals is definitely, okay. I don't want to be stuck in an office with cats and dogs. <laughs> right, okay. So this is just giving you those hands-on so you're more comfortable around horses, yes. correct? Yep. So she's been doing all the brushing that she went on the day she's here. She's not here every day. Um, and she's here at anywhere from two hours to four hours. It kind of depends on the day. Um, so she goes through and, and brushes all my horses for me. Um, when we have the colts, when we bring the colts in here, when the, some of these others are outside, we'll bring the colts in and she'll actually handle their feet and do all that stuff to get her, get her more comfortable with the horses and also helps me because she is grooming the horses. It also helps Brenda because it gives Brenda a break from doing this. And although she loves to do it, it just gives her a break and she's able to get some other stuff done. So today we've got several things going on. Um, I'm going to take out uh, Baron and Ken again and feed hay to the cows. And I think we'll have Olivia ride along with us just so she can kind of see what goes, is involved a little bit about with training horses. And so she's go is going through and, and brushing everybody. And, but we're going to start with, we're going to take Ken and Baron. So we'll get going on that job. So here's another job that Olivia's been starting to do. She's actually harnessing up my horses some, um, and she's doing pretty good at it. Uh, she uh, Here, is dealing with my tallest horse right now. She's going to put a harness on Ken right now. And of course, that's always very difficult because he's too tall. But she knows how to climb up onto the manger and get the collar on. Ken is very patient with her. And if you see, he actually put his head right through that collar and she just has to shove it over the top. And that was the easy part, because now she has to get the harness. Hey, buddy. So she has a, a bit of a, a trick to do it that I don't do because I'm a little taller than she is. A lot taller. <laughs> so she has that stool right there that Ken is getting used to. And she puts that in next to him. And so she can climb up on that while she's throwing the harness over the top of the can. So let's see how she does. Definitely not a perfected thing yet. So she comes in, she's getting that right arm high and throwing it up over the hand, over the collar as soon as she gets onto that stool and then she's positioning the harness over the top but it is difficult when I I can see that her top of her head is just about level with the top of Ken's back but she did it so now she'll get the hames positioned in place Ken had a busy day yesterday. We did uh, three sleigh rides. So that means uh, about eight trips out to the cabin and back because we had to go out in the morning and fill the fire. Then we took the first trip out and 
came, left them there, came back, went back to, for them again. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trips, yes, out to the cabin. So he got a pretty good workout. So she's getting them all harnessed up. I will go get Baron harnessed up and then we'll go get some hay. Man, Baron gave me some trouble backing out of his stall this morning. Fought me quite a bit. He didn't want to go to work. I guess. Ho. 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 I cuffed up. Cuffed up. Okay, throw them right up here. So we'll get this out and go feed the cows. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna, or after that, we do this, we're gonna try something we've never tried before. And, and uh, you'll have to just wait and see what that is. Okay. Poor Baron the other day, he took quite a flight across the ice out here. Really? Let's see how this goes. I'm not going this way necessarily, but I'm just curious. We get a little closer. Um, hello everyone, your hand Brenda the phone back. Could you run over there and you can see where the ice is? Uh, can you tell the difference? Are you straight ahead? We're yeah. Just run over there and see if it's slippery, slippery. Just run, run and kind of slide. Don't fall. I don't make problems. <laughs> Woo. Not too bad. Not bad. I'm going to cross. Oh boy. Here we go. Easy. Easy. Careful. Careful. That's much better. Yep. You can tell he was like a little bit nervous about it, but he may not remember exactly where it was either. Do you think it's still wet underneath in some places? Oh, hey. I don't know, but this was glare ice yesterday, yesterday too. It's fine. I wonder if I could go down to that gate. <laughs> oh, if I want to take a chance. We could expect, inspect it. Careful step. I go down there. I think we can, I think we can walk on that ice now. <clears throat> I get down there close to so we can holler to the cows. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but this is a warmer. It's warm enough out. This is those almost kind of sticky. Well, he surely went across that better than he did last time. Oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Here they come. <laughs> oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so Olivia, if we get down a little, here a little bit closer, I want you to run over and open up this gate hook and uh, walk it all the way back to the next post. Okay. And then we'll cross right through there, I hope. You see it? It's like straight ahead. Yep. Oh, I'm going to stop here just in case I have to turn around. So when you're walking through there, just kind of see how slippery that ice is because it was really, really, really bad. But I think the snow has made it much better. Come on, come on. Come on! 
Yeah, but you're not, you're walking on it. You couldn't walk on it the other day. Yeah. I think it's fine. I almost think it's like, um, the snow is like melting into yeah, it a little fine. bit. Yeah, it's fine. Hey, up. Crest up. Crest up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, careful, careful. You can just drop that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. There's water is open right there. Oh yeah, that's changed a lot. Come on, come on. The wind has died down, it's different. Oh. Hey. We'll wait till they get a little closer. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up to there past where that hay is right now and we'll just open the bales and just show them off the side. Don't hurry because I'm gonna drop the lines I wanna and then one of the purposes of doing this is so they learn to stand in and while well, I and go just do a lot of stopping and going ahead. Come on! Come on, come on! I cast up, cast up. Come on. Oh. Oh. Cast out. Cast out. Oh. Oh. Okay. Put up, go ahead and open one up. We'll take one bale out. Want this one thrown off? Yeah. Cast out. Oh. I cap a step. Oh. Good? Yeah. You want that one off too? Not that? yet. I cast up. Oh. 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 Okay. Cast up. Feel that. Cheek. Cheek. Cheek bang. G. 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 <laughs> this 
ice is so much better than it was. Brenda says it's still slippery, but it's still so much better. Baron walked across that, no problem at all. Oh. Well, I mean, I personally would be a little cautious because you, you never know with my boots. Let me explain a few things. I'll go back here. <laughs> so as you can see, as we're going across this ice, with the snow on the ice, how much better traction it was. Um, if it's a really dry, dry snow, it wouldn't have stuck at all and actually worse on ice. But this morning, it's like 26 degrees and it's a little bit wetter snow and it's, it's actually starting to stick a little bit to the ice, which is gonna make it so much better on all the problems with your, we're having with ice. Um, but what I want to talk about is a lot of times a horse that is barefoot that is used to ice, they actually learn how to walk on ice and they actually can go on ice better than a horse with shoes on that do not have borium or drill techs on the shoes. If they're just steel shoes, they are treacherous on ice, way worse than being barefoot. And also when we put our drill checks and or borium on the top of the on the on the bottom of the shoes they don't last forever they wear off they break off so when it gets to a point where you're losing that um drill techs you will have the same as a steel shoe and you will have a lot of troubles and i even noticed with ken a few times him slipping because he probably has a shoe that is is getting low on that drill text and so that's why he's slipping and baron did not slip hardly at all so when, anyhow once one of the percherons do to get now i need to take them up to get to reset here i gotta get an appointment and uh, they will have their snow pads go on also at that time <coughs> and baron and baron will stay barefoot all winter long he will not have shoes because he won't be going into the woods so he can get by without shoes. You you are planning that soon. I don't know if both, one or both, but they're gonna probably be going to the woods, the Percherons, whereas they haven't been yeah, so both much. Yeah, both of them will be. So, so we'll, we'll uh, unhitch the horses, and then I wanna try something afterwards that I am going to attempt to bring Lady out and put her with Darren and see how they react. Come here. Oh. 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 There's lots going on this morning and Ken's a little even nervous because Andy's over here working on putting up a new, um, putting in a new window and all different kinds of noises with that, especially for Baron. Andy's fixing what I broke. I was washing the window and the window fell right out. So Andy's putting a new window in. The good news is it needed to be replaced anyways. Buck's enjoying a little bit of time outside. A little downtime. And look at her pick up those feet. She's doing a great job. He's a little more stubborn. Yeah, they don't like to pick up their back feet as much. Well, good job.
so much better about their feet. <laughs> okay. So, Jim, do you that's, want to tell us what you're That's all right for right now. Um, and I'll explain what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, do something I've been talking about doing for quite some time now. With Lady, as most of you know, she is our Belgian mayor and she is in full. And so, as she comes toward her last trimester, I don't want to do any logging with her. Um, so, I still want to work her some. So, if she's working at home and my Pertrons and Bill are doing the logging work. I want to work her, so I am choosing to um, work her with Baron. Baron is actually the father of her foal. And so we don't know exactly how this is going to work. We've never hitched the two of them up together, of course. And so, but that's what we're going to try right now and see what happens. So the sled is out beside the truck body, and I'm going to take one out at a time. I'm not going to drive them out together. I'm just going to take the two of them out there one at a time and get them hitched up to the sled and see how they react. And then I may or may not drive them around. I may just let them stay in there for a while, but we'll see what happens. So Olivia, if you could get the bridle on uh, Lady, um, why don't you wait until I get Baron out there, actually, okay. and then you can do that and we'll hitch them up. Is this her bridle? Actually, I take that back. We're not doing it that way. Uh, her bridle is, it is not in here. It is out, out in the truck. Let me go grab it. Because um, actually we want to take her out first. I'm going to lead her right out there, so. I got right out. Okay, when you're leading her, come right down into the bit. Like that. Oh. Okay, let's take her out there. <coughs> oh. Okay, I want you to stand right here with her. And you can be standing on this side here so that you Obviously watch out for her front feet, which is not an issue, I'm sure. But um, just keep her over here where she belongs. As I bring Baron over, I will tie Baron and then I'll hitch him up. If there's any issues, you can always just swing away. Okay, so the last time that I led Baron out here and Lady was tied to the truck was when we actually did the breeding. <laughs> so this is all the more reason why we have to be a little bit concerned being a stud and all. All right, but generally being this time of year and Lady is already bred, this shouldn't be an issue because she's bred and even, she, even if she wasn't bred, it is during the winter months, mares actually do not come in heat very well. So that's usually not a problem, but we surely have to be careful. So I'm gonna hitch the lines up. We good. Not yet, don't worry about it. Come here. It seems like Lady doesn't care about Baron is interested. Okay. Give me a little bit. Kimmy. Kimmy. I could try to explain some of the things that you have to be careful with a stud and a mare like this, but I guess the one thing I would say, if you're inexperienced, you should not even be 
attempting such a thing as this without an experienced person with you because of all the issues that surely could happen. Okay, so I want you to actually come over here a little bit, Olivia. Stay more between them. So, yeah, you can just slip underneath here. And so the, what you want to do is actually put your hand on his nose type of thing so that he doesn't swing his head over this way. And then I will get the eveners hitched up. Get in here, lady. And get my lines ready. It's so good because Baron has done a lot of work on this sled now. And of course, Lady's done tons over the years. So, we will get him hitched up and maybe drive him around a little bit. But one thing for sure is they will definitely be spending time just standing here. And uh, hopefully they won't cause trouble. My lines are a little bit shorter. So I can't quite reach yet. Lady, back up in here. Lady, back up in here. Lady, back up here. Back up, lady. Ba, ba, ba. Oh. So one thing we've got to be concerned of, probably the most, the biggest thing that I'm going to be concerned of is to make sure uh, Baron doesn't attempt to bite lady. Oh. What about Lady kicking? It's a possibility, but you can almost always tell by their, um, you can, they'll tell you when they're gonna cause trouble. Um, you know, you'll hear them snorting and you'll hear them squealing, all those things that are involved with mares and stallions. That is almost too complicated to totally explain. Get in there, Baron. Get in there. Back up, Baron. Back up here. Back up here. Ew. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie his rope, keep his nose away from her, and then I want to unsnap Lady's rope and come right to the back. Um, go on Lady's side. The lead rope? The lead rope, yes. Okay, come over here. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Ho, ho, jump on, Brenda. <coughs> you can both jump on. We'll go for a ride. I cast up. Cast us up. And what I have to be worried about is Baron not going ahead and causing trouble. And, uh, I see some issues even right now that I want to deal with. Um, Lady is a horse that tends to put her head down quite a bit, and uh, which is fine. But because of that, Baron is picking his head up and, and the line to his center bit is underneath Lady's. So that's we kind of pulling up on hers. Careful, Lady. Careful. So I want to change that. So we'll go right around. Careful and go right back to the truck on this first trip. Just a few things. My lines are holding barren a little bit too much back in the center. And I want to adjust that. But uh, everything's good so far. We'll swing her around and head right back to the, to the truck body. Lady has not been hitched up, I think, for two weeks now. So of course she's feeling pretty good. If she gets really irritated, she could easily kick a, a leg over at towards him, but it's not likely. I don't like to run like this. It's hard to hold Lady at a walk right at the moment. But she minds so good I can stop her at any time, I'm sure. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Olivia. Oh. Oh. If you could go up to Baron's side and hold his outside line to keep him separate, keep his head over, away from Lady. Not, not too far, just comfortably straight ahead. 
So now I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna do a couple adjustings. Okay, now I think we're ready to try again. <clears throat> Calf step. Calf step. Calf step. Ah, oh, yeah. Calf up. Calf. Let me get some shots from off. Okay. You can still hear me. I'm going out the trail though. Okay, well. I'm there to go back. I can stop and you can get ahead at some point. All right, I'll Jump get on for right now. <laughs> so, do you notice the difference in size? Lady is so much smaller than Ken that the size difference between these two isn't anywhere near as great. And I think you'll find when they get, when Baron's fully matured, weight-wise, they will be about the same. So I'm actually expecting very little trouble going out. I'm will expect more troubles coming back because Lady tends to want to try to run home. And with Bill, a lot of times I will let her. And so I'm gonna to have to be, you know, careful with that and make sure that she stays at a very slow controlled trot or make her walk on the way home. Going out, I'm not surprised that she's walking good. And I think that the pace of the two will be good. I'm watching Lady's ears and her head a lot also because I can tell a lot what's going on by the way her ears are, you know, right now they're laid back and they go back and forth. But when they're laid back, the chances of her swinging over and biting on Baron are a lot higher than if when her ear, ears are straight ahead. Some people might think her, her ears are laid back so she can hear me. And no, that's not the case at all. Her ears are laid back because she's mad and wants to go after Baron. But uh, Baron's ears are not laid back and he's kind of tended to work and he's not really too concerned that Lady's there. He's working like he's been working, which is great. This is a great time of the year to be training colts and to be training, putting new horses with each other because there's a decent amount of snow on the ground and if they started to run, you could just head them right across this big old wide open field and, and they will tire after a while of running through the steep, the steeper snow. We're right on the trail now, so it's not that deep, but out in the field, it's a lot deeper. So they're doing great while they're walking, so I'm gonna stop them and see if they'll stand without fighting each other. Oh. Ho, 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 as they stand here, ho, I can always, Baron is always trying to swing his head over there to see who's there and to even to fight who's there, just the stallion in them. I mean, he's not really bad like that, but he's definitely trying to swing over there, ho, but Lady's doing great. I kept up. Careful. I'm definitely not gonna have them stay in there too long. We'll get them walking and get them moving, and that's the best thing for them. You got any questions as to what's going on that people no. might questions? might be thinking about asking if they were here? 
is the size difference do anything? Size difference in the two horses? Yeah. Well, no, actually. And, and like I said earlier, the size difference between these two and the size difference between a cannon gear is huge. Um, now, there's one thing I haven't done yet, careful guys, is swap sides. And I will be doing that sometime soon. Baron needs to learn to, to be able to drive on either the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Um, and that will have to be taught to him because if you have a horse that stays on the one side, you know, for years and years, yeah. and you swap sides, they, it takes a while for them to work good on that opposite side. I've talked about this quite a bit when, when working horses. I'm always watching the evener, which is what's the piece of steel that they're actually pulling and that you're looking at right now. And I'm always watching that to make sure it stays even. And so that's awful hard to do sometimes. And when you're training a colt, it's especially hard to do. So because of that, you'll see me on a sled like this quite often sliding back and forth from one side to the other side. And what that does, when one horse is walking a little bit faster than the other or has or gotten ahead of the other one for some reason, I can slide over and if I'm on the be, behind the horse that is the slowest, it puts a little bit more pressure on the horse that's the fastest and slows them down. I can do the same thing with adjusting the lines, but when you do that, that's kind of more of a permanent fix Whereas this sliding back and forth is just a very temporary fix to control, you know, the horses at that stage and what they're doing. Another thing, and people have asked about this quite often, is, is what I tell horses. And I, I like to say it really doesn't matter what you tell horses to train them to go ahead or stop or whatever. Um, but what's important is to be consistent. And I try to use the same commands, careful guys, careful, with, careful lady. I try to use the same commands with all my horses at all times so that when I swap teams like this, um, they are the same commands so they all know what, what's going on. Lady is getting pretty ugly right at the moment, um, but that's okay, understandable. So we're gonna swing around the cabin here and head right into the woods on the sleigh ride trail. I have no doubt that there's going to be until they get used to each other and start working with each other a fair amount, there's going to be issues that they need to deal with. And uh, we'll just have to deal with them one at a time as they come up. You would think with Baron being the stud, he's going to kind of dumb, be the ruler of the, of the two, if you want to call it that. Um, but so often, a mare will be the ruler because uh, they just seem to have something about them that puts them in charge. As a husband, we, we all know that's there's some truth to that, right guys? Careful, 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 careful. I've had a comment just recently, just yesterday actually, on a sleigh ride, and they said, is there a lead horse? And I've talked about this before, but uh, I said, uh, I said, yeah, it's it's me. I'm I'm the lead horse, and uh, I talked about that before in some videos. The fact that you know I want my horses to be working right together, and I'm the boss type of thing, and uh, sometimes that's hard to do. But 
see as we're turning back towards home, Lady's starting to get a little bit more prance in her step, which is not at all surprising. And uh, she will probably be a little bit hard to hold on the way home. Looks to me like she's wasting a lot of energy. Yeah. Jumping up and down in place. Yeah. It's actually good that Baron already knows he's doing good. Yeah, he's and, and I've let I've let I've had Baron trot a little bit with Ken even, so I, it's not a too big of a concern there. Except he might not stop on a dime as well as the other ones right. do, and then that could be an issue. If Lady has been working right along, she would not be quite this way that she is right today. But like I said, she hasn't worked for two weeks. I wanted to show something. Maybe I'll get out a little bit further than the trail. Um, some ways that I actually hold my lines. Um, I've had a lot of people comment how in their minds this is very dangerous to do and I, I'm not quite sure why they think that and I'll explain why I do not think that's true. So I guess I can do it right now. So as we can see, ladies trying to go fast and Baron's walking a nice pace. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on Lady as we head home. So as because I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, it's just quite hard to hold. And so what I'm gonna do, what I did already on the one hand, is wrap my hand. So I hold my hand like this, and I wrap it one time like that. And for some reason, people think that the, well, their hand's gonna get caught or something like that. And I'm not quite sure why they think that, because the way I have this set up, all I do is, is hold my finger just a little bit, and my hand's free. Well, I can see if you didn't do it like that, it wouldn't, I, you I'm, could get it caught. I'm not quite sure how you could do it so that you could get caught. But uh, I suppose there's there's a way you could do it wrong. You got it between your fingers there. Well, I do that right now. Helps. But it's yeah, I suppose that's part of it. I threw, have it through my index finger like that, ah, so that when I when I let go, it just slides right off the top. Yeah. And I still have the lines completely in my hands. And it's very simple to do. It's like just a little change in technique would change that, so it might be dangerous. But right. the way you have it is totally just safe. the way you put the. Um, rope around their hame it comes off so easy but right. if you did it not the right way because right. uh, I get that it's more it's a technique and <clears throat> I don't always have that technique so because lady is so hard to hold I'm also I have this two by six right here so I can use that for for to support my foot if I choose to and um, I'm, I'm leaning back pretty good but I try to keep her up somewhat of a walk. By good rights, what I could have done is I could have taken her and Bill out on this sled and run, run around the field for a while just to get rid of some of that foolish energy that she has because she really has a lot of foolish energy right now. And that's a great thing. It's good to have a, a horse feeling good. But when you're training a colt like this, it's better when they're a little bit tired. But that's okay. I think Baron would just like to walk. It's nice with Lady because as crazy as she is, I holler to her. She'll stop. Oh! You know, she stops so fast and so quick and so good. And I expect that of her and she does do it. Well, Baron stopped good too, just now. Well, yeah. yeah. But he kind of had to. He had she to, did. but... I can't stop. Careful. Careful. Be good, ladies. Slow down. Homeward bound. Well, maybe it's good for people to see almost a different side of lady. You know, they, everybody thinks she works so perfectly, and she does work great. But um, going out across the field, she was great. But now coming back, head to the barn. It's a different story. She just wants to go. I was actually thinking that today I wasn't going to drive them around. I was just going to tie them to the 
truck body and just let them stand together to get you east used to each other. And I'll still do that even now. I'm gonna tie them to the truck body. And they may stay in here for an hour and I'll have to keep checking on them, but they uh, should be fine to stand here. And uh, I'll have to tie them in such a way that they're totally separate from each other, cannot touch each other's, you know, get their, can't get their noses together, cause trouble. Freezing back there? Yeah, you didn't um, tell Olivia and I that we, we were going around, and I don't even You don't have a hat on. on. No, that's what I was doing. <laughs> And I didn't bring my good gloves, but you never anyways, know. Anyways, you you never know with him. You just never know. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> Did you run her into the? Uh, thing? actually, take the rope around and snap the rope into Lady's bit. Show that hole there. I want to show you that hole in the truck body that we have. As you can see, at one point we came in here kind of fast. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to back them up just a touch. Map here. Map here. Oh. So I'm going to leave that fish to her bit so she can't swing that way and touch noses with him. And on his side... Why can't she swing? I mean, she can still go quite a ways, can't she? Just to there, I guess. That's, it looks like you could go further than you can. So for him, i got to hitch to his halter. I'm just going to hitch it over here, I guess. Just for an extra precaution, it's going to keep his head hopefully away from her. But I'm going to stay close by. Okay, so that's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Very pleased with ladies, um, how Lady and Baron work together. But I'm sure there'll still be issues at times, but we'll be keeping you updated and, and continue to do some training with these two together. So have a great day. So actually that's not the end of the video. This is going to turn into my longest video I've ever made and I'd love to have comments even if you like these long videos or if you were bored or to death and shut it off but please comment below on, on that whole situation. So anyways we put the left the horses out here for a good hour and I kept the video going and there was just no problems at all. They were great the whole time. So after that time of standing there and just getting used to each other, I grabbed Andy and we took the horses back and unhitched them and I was actually able to drive them over to the barn. To keep them from fighting, that's all I'm concerned with. Yeah. Oh, I get that. out and run around the field a couple times before I drove these two together. Yeah. Like I said, they did find one up. Come back. Okay, man, careful. Okay, careful. Oh. Just put his head. Keep him separate from her and it should be fine. There we go. Andy was such a good sport and willing to grab the camera and follow me back to the barn.
You just come hold, lady. Yeah. If it was Ken, he would stand here, but yeah. lady wants to follow us. So. I've been doing a lot of practice on making him stand there while I unhitch. You notice when I went up to get the ropes, he stood right still? Yeah. Very yeah. good. Okay. 